वेलकम लर्नर्स आई वेलकम यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एन आई ओ एस टूडे वील लर्न अबाउट द क्वालिटीज ऑफ गुड राइटिंग यू नो राइटिंग मेक्स अ मैन परफेक्ट इट्स नॉट ईजी टू राइट बट इफ वी नो द बेसिक्स ऑफ राइटिंग वील सर्टनली बी एबल टू बिकम गुड राइटर्स अ राइटिंग बेसिकली इज a skill which is to be developed with the help of organizational skills and if we really want to write something good excellent writer we want to become we have to see into the following points number 1 organization then suitable style choice of words punctuation editing spellings clear purpose grammar legible handwriting so all together it's not that easy as it appears to be in fact so many aspects are to be taken into consideration before we can boast of being a good writer but you know learners without writing especially the learners the students they cannot become successful because they have to write for each exam that they want to appear and these are the platforms these are the aspects they have to see before they start writing so how can we organize ideas what should we do to organize our ideas number 1 first of all collect ideas but how can we collect ideas brainstorm or read if we want to write about some particular topic we can talk with our friends we can talk to our teacher or if we don't find anyone we can read books articles newspapers magazines related to that topic then write them down all those points which you think are important you can write them down dot down the points the main points which you can change into paragraph later on then divide them in different stages like beginning development and conclusion like once you have all the points you have written them down you have to go through them again to see which one would give you a better beginning which one would be able to influence impress your uh, audience better then how to develop that text how to develop that material say if there is a problem so what you can do is initially you tell the problem then what can be the factors then how can we solve that problem or steps or suggestions or advice for the solution of the problem and then finally whatever is your opinion about that problem you can write as conclusion after you have pointed out after you have noted down the beginning the development and conclusion arrange the points in a particular correct order so wherever you have written the number uh, points you put down a number there so that there is a sequencing each point that you use will not be repeated number 1 number 2 the reader will not be puzzled will not be baffled on reading a passage or article which is not arranged so you got it first talk to your friends write down the points and then find out the stages arrange them in an order and you will be able to write about an article then there is another problem the problem is how to get to the topic that you want to write and how can we brainstorm suppose you are going to write about environment you use the word environment and then start writing the words which come to your mind immediately say somebody will say peaceful environment somebody will say noise another person may say water then surroundings working environment 
even natural environment, environmental science. So when you think of the word environment or for that matter, if you think of the topic environment, so many different ideas come to your mind. Then you have to decide what is the suitable style for this. And how would you decide this style? First of all, find out the purpose. Why are you writing? Then who is the audience? Know the audience. Like if your readers or the people who you think are going to read, they are going to read the topic, the language, the words should be easy for them to understand know the level of audience, means how much can they grasp. Suppose you are writing an article which you think is to be read by a scientist, then the terms you can use scientific terms. But if it is a general audience, if it is children, so rather than using big scientific terms, you can use simple words. Instead of saying H2O, you can say water, that will make it very simple. So, then know the situation, maybe the situation is different and for that situation you have to decide what is going to be your style, then know the format. Say if you are writing a notice, a message, a telegram, an article, letter, invitation, what is the format for that which you are going to write. So, unless you know the format. Suppose you are about to write an invitation and instead of invitation if you write it in the form of a notice, it will no more be a request, it will become like a command and maybe people will not like it, it may appear to be rude. So you should know the format for the purpose for which you are writing, then choosing the word, choice of the words, choose appropriate there are so many words for the same word. You can say good. How was the food? Good. How was the exam? Good. How was the weather? Good. But if you say tasty food, if you say fantastic mood or if you say pleasant weather, certainly your writing work will become a better writing work. Then avoid unnecessary words. Sometimes we use the words which are not required because the words we have used, they have already conveyed the meaning. So the words which are not required, simply beating about the bush should be avoided. Use according to audience. If my audience is illiterate or semi-literate, my choice of words should be such that it is not difficult for them to understand the material that I have written. Use according to occasions. There are occasions which are very formal and in that formal occasion, we cannot use an informal uh, word or informal language. Use according to purpose and then most important that we sometimes do not pay heed is appropriate collocation. And collocation is like sometimes we use two words and they go together. Collocations are the words which go together. We can say a remote possibility, but we can't say a distant possibility. A strong T, but we cannot say a strong car. So collocation means the words which are friendly with each other, which go well together. And if maybe they have the same meaning, remote and distant have almost the same meaning, but they do not go or they do not collocate with each other. Just now I was telling you about the words which collocate, like great, uh, great co collocates well with admiration. We can say great admiration. We can say great anger, great excitement, great failure, great fun, great happiness, great pride, 
but we cannot say big pride, big happiness, big fun. Now, next thing that is very essential is punctuation marks. Punctuation marks, in fact, have they appear to be very small. Sometimes they are not even visible. We don't bother to check them or see them, but they have the power to change the meaning of the text. So, when we write something, these punctuation marks are to be kept in mind. The boss which controls the sentence is full stop. Then comma, when we have not completed our work, then question mark, exclamation mark to show surprise, then colon, semicolon, single quotation marks and then double quotation marks parenthesis, hyphen, ellipsis, apostrophe. Apostrophe it appears to be a comma over a word, but if it is not used properly, if we say Mohan's book, so after Mohan we will put an apostrophe comma and then S, which will show the relationship. So, all these punctuation marks, they play a very important role. Even the capital words, they also are very important, we should know when we write, like when we are speaking. Nobody bothers about your punctuation marks, though it comes in your tone, but when we are writing, capitalization of letters like the beginning of sentence, the proper nouns, the names of the rivers etc., all these are to be written in capital letters. Then we come to correcting errors. So, if we have written something and we think it is correct, then we are wrong learners because we have to edit it ourselves first. Because when we are writing a particular point in the flow of emotions or in a flow, we are likely to make errors. So, first of all, when we are editing our own text, we have to first check whether the verb is in agreement with subject. Like, if the subject is plural, the verb form has got to be plural. We cannot say boys plays, it's boys play. We cannot say children writes, because children is plural. So, the verb right will also be in the plural form and that is right. Then singular and plural forms of noun. So, subject and verb agreement say if you have the plural of pronoun they. So, you will not say they is, they are. Then singular and plural form of noun. So, if your noun number one we should know what is the plural form of a particular noun because the words, the nouns, they are singular means one, plural means many and they are not in the same way that we form plurals. For some plurals, we add S or S like cup, cups, pen, pens, pencil, pencils, but there are some plurals which are formed by making some other changes like child, children foot, feet. So, we have to be very careful whether we have used the correct form of noun, singular or plural. Then verb, verb plays a very vital role in a sentence, appropriate form. Appropriate form, whether it is a first form that is required or is it SES form is required or second form of the verb that is he went to market. We cannot say he go to market. So, then third form of the verb or has been, had been, has, have, had all these forms are to be checked carefully. Then the most dangerous thing that frightens the children is tense, it is not that difficult. Do not be tense on seeing the word tense. Tense in fact shows time. If you show a wrong time, 
the whole text will go waste. Say your mother is asking for you for food and instead of saying I will come just now, if you say I came and had my lunch, sorry you won't have any lunch. So time, tense is to be used correctly, correct form of adjectives, whether we will be using full here, whether it will be beauty and beautiful or it will be other uh, suffixes added to the adjectives or comparative and superlative degrees of adjectives, then right form of pronouns. They are very small family in the parts of a speech, but without them we cannot write something correctly because they are the part of almost each and every sentence. So, whether we will be using word like he or him, whether it is going to be the nominative case means it will be he, if I say he goes to school, but I can't say him goes to school and then correct spellings. And here we are going to check something. Let us see how can we add it. So, when it comes to editing, most of the people they feel whatever they have written is correct. They can check what others have written and find errors, but not in what they have written. So, here is a very small exercise for you. You what you have to do is number one, find out the error, write it correctly and write down why it is wrong, why, how would you justify? For example, one of my servants tell me. So, what is the error here? Tell. One of my servants tells. So, it is one, not the verb will be according to the word one and not the plural form of servants. So, one of my servants tells me. Then second, I and he are brothers. So, how can we correct it? Yes, try. We never use first person, whenever first person is used along with second or third person pronoun, we always use first person in the app. Then none of us have seen him, none of us has seen him, have will be wrong. Open your book at 6 page, that is wrong. Open your book at, yes, yes, at page 6, very good. Now, again, sometimes we write extra words, we do not bother that somebody has to waste the energy for reading those words which are not adding to the meaning. So, here is a text, a very small text. Sometimes I was hold a class two with the donkeys, the which our only washerman brings to carry away the some dirty and unclean clothes. A number of words are used here extra. Sometimes I hold, not I was hold, a class to and with. Uh, what is this? Both the prepositions are used together. So, only one proposition. Sometimes I hold a class with the donkeys, then again there are two words, the and which. So, which are only washermen. There is hardly any need for the word only. Brings to carry away the some, again the and some. So, carry away the. Dirty and unclean, same meaning. So, why not use only dirty? So, the correct version will be, sometimes I hold a class with the donkeys, which our washerman brings to carry away the dirty clothes. Now, spellings, they that is a magic. You know, writing correct spelling is not that easy. There are certain basic rules. If we know them, we become the hero of the class. How? Oh, let us know some rules. 
words of one syllable having one vowel and ending in a single consonant. Now see the word beg. Beg is one syllable, one part of the word and it is ending in single consonant G. G is a consonant. Double the consonant before a suffix beginning with a vowel. So we have the word beg and we added ed to it and after adding ed we double the letter g that is g. Next example net. Net is again a single syllable ending with a consonant. So the moment a suffix was added another part that is ing part was added with a which begins with vowel. So what we did? We doubled the letter T. So the word became netting. Words ending in double E do not drop E before a suffix. So the example is agree. It has got double E. So when we added another suffix that is meant, we did not drop that out. So we keep it with us. Agreement. For C, when ing was added to it, it is still is foreseeing, having both the C's with it intact. Now another rule is words ending with Y. If following a consonant, change the Y into I before any suffix. Uh, for example, carry, it ends with Y. And when ed is added to it, this y is changed into ied. Yes, what are the other examples? Copy, copy, added ed, copied. Hurry, hurried. Happy, lee, happily. Reply, ed, replied. So now, whenever we find a word ending with y, and where a suffix is to be added, we will change the y into i. Then another when full is added to a word, the second l is dropped. And we can say full is never full when it added to another word. So beauty and full. But when we write the word beautiful, it is not full, it is beautiful. So full does not have double L, it is single L, useful. So the word is useful, single L, houseful, single L, wonderful, single L. So if you think full has got double L and whenever you are going to add it to the word, full will remain full, no, one L will be dropped. So words ending in E. Following a consonant, drop the e if the suffix begins with a vowel. Love, it has got e and then when we add ing, this e is dropped. Move, it ends with e. We have added a, a, b, l, e, a, suffix beginning with a. So we have removed the e from here. Likewise, hate and when we added ing, it became hating. So no e is to be used when a word ending in e and it is followed by a consonant drop the e. Then purpose of writing. Why are we writing it? Then choice of words, style, format, all will depend on the purpose of the writing. If you are not clear why are you writing, certainly you will never be able to give a very good text. So first of all, ask yourself, why am I writing? Then be clear whether I am writing a letter, a report, an essay, a debate or a notice or an invitation or a story or an article. So if I am clear about it, the task will become easy for me to write. Then grammar. Grammar, it is not easy to write grammatically correct sentences because you have to use correct parts of a speech, then their appropriate usage. And for that, 
you have to know the basic rules of grammar. Then certainly you will be able to write grammatically correct sentences. And how can you write grammatically correct sentence? What will make you a good writer? First, free of errors in grammar and punctuation. Then, conform to the conventions of standard English. Then, sensitive to the level of formality required. Convey a clear sense of the writer's purpose. Convey, why are you writing? And then, you should know whether the text you are writing, article you are writing, material you are writing that has got a standard English or not. Grammar is used correctly or not. Punctuation marks are used or not. Then carries out an effective strategy in terms of developments of thoughts and arguments. Maybe your material is grammatically correct, but if you are not able to communicate what you want to say, if it is not in the proper order, if the sequencing is not done, development of the thought is not proper, then it will not be a good piece of writing. Then if you want to become good writer, demonstrate good style, which can be learnt by reading a lot of material, engaging the reader with its use of diction and punctuation, play with words, use words which are simple to follow and which give proper meaning to your uh, written work. Then tips for good writing. Good writing breaks into four tasks. It is not difficult also if we know the basics, if we are clear, it is not that difficult, it is not that frightening. So these are my tips learners. Uh, first of all, you break your writing task into four tasks. Decide what you are going to say, then concentrate on what you have to say so that you are able to form an idea, make grammatically correct sentences, arrange the sentences in proper order. Thank you so much.